HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll introduce you to some Hopkinton locals heading to the White House. The first Greyhound Friends 5K took place. You'll hear about a free public summer art class at the Senior Center and much more. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. The Board of Selectmen held a public forum to discuss town trash and recycling. The current contract expires June 30th and automated trash and recycling is an option going forward. We received three options from E.L. Harvey and the option that we're recommending is the automated collection of both municipal solid waste, trash and recyclables. And to that end, what E.L. Harvey will do is they will provide two wheeled carts free of charge to every residence in town that is currently part of the trash collection program and that's single family, two family and three family homes. The 110 Grill is officially open for business in the Lumber Street Plaza. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held to welcome the business to town. Many different trees, flowers and plants were installed at the West Main Street median entering town from 495 or coming towards town from the Price Chopper Plaza. The goal of the project was to create a nice scenic landscape at one of the gateways into Hopkinton. This goes back to probably two and a half, three years ago with Ken Driscoll from Select Energy. It was his idea. Um, he got a group of us together, uh, mostly Chamber of Commerce members, uh, and we talked about uh, the idea. And the idea was to really beautify the entrance or the gateway to Hopkinton. Um, when I found out about it, I wanted to be part of it. Uh, we're in the business of beautification. And this to me was important because when people pull off the highway, it's the first impression they have in Hopkinton. It's gonna say, this is a, this is a nice community. They take the, the time to beautify their, their, their road median strips and their highways. H Camp station manager Jim Cousins, along with his daughter, will be biking 30 miles in La Crosse, Wisconsin at the JDRF Ride to Cure Diabetes. So my daughter was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes several years ago, and our family typically does something to help support the JDRF, which is doing great work to try to cure type 1 diabetes. And this year, Rachel and I are riding in the JDRF ride to cure diabetes. I don't know how I signed up for 30 miles, but that's what I'm doing. Do you have a cause you are involved with and would like to promote it on HCAM? Email us, news at hcam.tv. The first ever Greyhound Friends 5K took place this past weekend. There was a great turnout of hounds and humans for what was a great event to raise money towards the Greyhound Friends shelter. On a beautiful Saturday morning, Greyhound Friends hosted their annual 5K walk and run. There was plenty of entertainment for the hounds and the humans, and the proceeds went to a great cause. Um, right now we have a very old system that we use to clean the dog's teeth, so it's about a $5,000 uh, new mach dental machine that we're trying to raise the money for, so all the proceeds from this will go to a new dental machine to clean the dog's teeth, because a lot of the racers come off the racetrack and they have pretty bad teeth, so we used to clean them, and well, so now they're under anesthesia for a little less time, get their teeth cleaned and get spay or neutered. Upton native and now Somerville resident Matt Tiuli finished first overall in the 5K, while Hopkinton native Lauren Hazard was the first female to cross the finish line and finished second overall. So we, um, my family, and these are my parents behind you right here, uh, and those are our two dogs right there, Margot and Chester. Uh, we've had greyhounds in my family since 
gosh, I was nine years old, so almost 20 years now. Uh, we've been coming here to Greyhound Friends, so this was a really awesome opportunity to come out from Somerville and see the family and, you know, get a chance to run a cool race, the first of its kind, and support a really great charity on an awesome day. So. How was the course out there? Oh my gosh, it was hilly. Um, it was a great day to run, which helped, but uh, I don't think I anticipated the whole first mile was straight uphill, but it's was nice and, uh, nice and downhill after that, so it was a nice little coast to the finish. Well, you finished in first place, so it couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> it was, yeah. I'm, I'm actually kind of a retired racer myself. Um, I used to run in high school and college and a little bit after, but um, I took almost a five or six year hiatus, so uh, it's kind of analogous, I guess, in a way. All these guys are retired racers. I'm a bit of a retired racer so it was, it was cool to uh, kind of lace them up again and come out and have a chance to compete again especially for this great cause. So. All right, was this your first time in the Greyhound Friends race? Uh, for, yeah so first time running here um, I think it's gonna have to be an annual tradition this is amazing so um, hopefully next year and many years to come after that. All right and uh, can you talk about your dogs a little bit? How old are they? Where'd you get them? Yeah we got them right here at Greyhound Friends. Uh, Margo is eight years old and Chester is seven years old. Uh, before that, we had uh, Greta and Rudy, um, and they've passed. But those were—I mean, these are just the best dogs in the world. They're—they're they're so gentle and loving and caring and grateful. And I mean, I feel like everybody should have a greyhound. They're just amazing dogs to have. All right. Well, you're probably as fast as one. <laughs> I wish. Congratulations on finishing first. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, I liked it. It was a good course. Uh, it was definitely difficult. One of the hillier courses we could pick in Hopkinton, but it was a good one. And what made you want to run today? Um, I've been a volunteer staff member here at the shelter for three years now. Um, I started the volunteer program, Trails for Tails. Um, I love getting involved with the dog. It's great to see them like get out of the shelter, have a good time. So I think it's a great event. What's uh, Tales for Trails all about? Um, it's a volunteer program where people sign up for like a weekly slot and then they can take uh, any of our dogs out for like hikes or runs out on like nearby trails we have by here. So just people get good exercise, the dogs get good exercise. Uh, excellent. How would someone get involved with, uh, with that? Just come down here and... Yeah, um, well I was a volunteer here for two years and then I just started this this past year, so. All right, excellent. Uh, were you happy with your uh, time out there? Yeah, um, not in great shape right now. I'm just starting up training for college, but I think it was a good starting point. Well, you were first place for the female, so I yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you. All right, and um, I heard you organized the event today. Uh, can you talk about what went into organizing it and how long that took? Sure. Actually, my daughter, Melissa Lundgren, did a lot of the organizing. I just kind of followed her directions. But um, we, we talked to a lot of vendors. We've had a lot of people that have stepped up and offered to donate. Uh, we have doggy massages here and people selling collars and leashes. We have Not Your, Not Your Average Joes came and they set up a booth for us. Um, and Foodies Cafe donated all the sandwiches for us. So we've had a lot of people really step forward and, and help out, luckily. So, um, Excellent. And a beautiful yeah. day uh, for today's yeah. event. Uh, can you just talk about how uh, everything went and uh, did people seem to enjoy it? Yeah, I think we had over, well, over 100 racers. Um, we're going to think about 120 is, was the last number. And it seems like everything went well. So we. A lot of people are still filing in with dogs. A lot of people are walking with dogs, and they took, they emptied pretty much our entire shelter. We have 30 plus dogs in our shelter, and they emptied uh, pretty much all of them to uh, walk with them. So, terrific day for people and dogs. Speaking of Greyhound Friends, it is now time for our Pets of the Month. And recently, Greyhound Friends introduced me to a couple of very nice hounds named Boots and Cooper, who are looking for a home. This is uh, Boots, who's from Ireland, actually. It's an Irish dog. Um, very, um, very sweet, outgoing. Uh, would be uh, good with other dogs. We're not sure about cats. Most of the Irish dogs aren't aren't cat friendly. But he, uh, yeah, he came over with another greyhound. We bring a few over, a few greyhounds, Irish greyhounds, over to. Uh, uh, represent all of the uh, all the other greyhounds there that uh, don't really have anywhere near as much chance of being adopted as, as greyhounds do here. 
he uh, just he's a he's a good boy. Needs to learn you know some of the basics, but uh, but will be uh, will be a great dog. How old is he? Um, the Irish dogs have letters in their ears. The American dogs have numbers, so it's easier to tell how old they are. Um, I would say that he's three. He's three years old, and a uh, a good dog. Be a good girl. Uh, Cooper is um looks like she was born in 2013. She's uh just got spayed this week. We have a little surgery here at the kennel so we can do uh, spay neuters here. Uh, nice quiet calm dog. She'd be great for uh, taking for walks. She doesn't doesn't seem to be, uh, be at all bothered by other dogs. We're not we haven't tested her with cats yet but she uh, She's just a, a, the good-natured, companionable, beautiful. She has sort of the, the Greyhound uh, uh, Maybelline look with uh, permanent Maybelline. With uh, just beautiful, beautiful markings. Nice girl. For more information about the dogs available at Greyhound Friends, head over to their website, greyhoundfds.org. Coming up on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. You'll hear about a free art class open to the public at the Hopkinton Senior Center and we'll introduce you to a Hopkinton fourth grader and a local winner of the Food Network's TV show Chopped who will be heading to the White House. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Do you have what it takes? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. If you're looking to do some artwork this summer, the Hopkinton Senior Center may have the perfect solution. Sally Almy and Mary McLeod recently talked to me about a free art group open to the public at the Senior Center every Monday morning from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Well, here we are at the Open Art Studio here at the Senior Center on Monday mornings. Um, we begin at 9.30. Anybody can come and go when you wish, and we stay here till 11.30. And uh, we have um, about three or four people who come steadily, and um, one of them is our wonderful Sally Elmy, and she is a wonderful artist. But you don't have to be a super artist if you just want to get into the paint, right, Sally? That's right, and mo most people, th uh, many people think they can't paint, but here it, you can do whatever you want to do. You can copy 
and get get a feel for the way the paint works that way and the big, eventually you'll get into doing your own painting. Um, you can come and watch and I think if anybody who's watching is going to want to start to join in. Yes, indeed. So please come and uh, join us. Or come up and have a cup of coffee. We'll treat. Is there certain things uh, that you paint or is it just pretty much yeah, paint whatever you like? You paint whatever you like. And Mary's painting with oils. I'm painting with watercolors this time. I usually paint with acrylics, uh, so we have quite a few supplies. People can come without any supplies and get started and just and then decide what they might want to buy if they're really into it. Um, so, now do you have a favorite thing you like to paint? I like to paint animals and nature, um, but so I've got a still life set up here uh, for flowers. Sometimes I start at home and uh, look out my window and get the, the basics by looking and then bring it in and work on the details here too. I love painting nature also in seascapes. I have painted several seascapes along Cape Cod and, um, and I give them to people who I know love the Cape and they just love it. But right now I am painting for my grandson, Andrew. He loves Echo Lake here in Hopkinton. He has gone fishing there for years and years when he's come up to visit us on weekends and he just loves walking down there and fishing. So I'm doing a painting for him. And uh, I told him and he was very happy. All right, excellent. Now how long uh, does this uh, art group go? Does it go all year long, every Monday? All year long, we're here. For more information about programs available at the Senior Center, be sure to search our website, hcam.tv, or head over to hopkinton.gov to access the Senior Center contact information and website. Family Life Pastor at the Vineyard Church in Hopkinton, Aureli Biggers, recently won an episode of the Food Network TV show, Chopped. In addition to this great accomplishment, she won another prestigious award, Dinner at the White House. Aureli Biggers, alongside Hopkins Elementary fourth grade student Abby Newman, entered and won a healthy lunchtime competition hosted by PBS and will be heading to the White House to have dinner with First Lady Michelle Obama and winners of the contest from other states. Here are Abby and Aureli to tell you more about their tremendous accomplishment. Now I understand uh, you two are going to the White House. <laughs> Tell about, tell about it, about Abby. Now it's your turn to talk. What happened? How? Why are we going to the White House? Uh, oh, I don't know. You want me to tell, talk about it? So, um, as I said, I, I, I entered recipe <laughs> contest and I um, saw this contest that is sponsored by um, PBS Kids and um, the challenge is to cook with someone within eight and twelve years old. And because I am the family pastor at the church, I thought about. Abby, because we have cooked together before. So I called her mom, and what did I ask her? What did I ask her mom? If I could come to her house. Mm -hmm. And do what? And cook it. Yep. So we, the challenge was to use what our state is uh, known for. So Abby came with a few ingredients. What was the, the ingredients? Hmm. Cranberries. Cranberries, mm-hmm. Cod. Cod fish, mm -hmm. and then we use potatoes. You thought of potatoes. Yeah, I thought about the potatoes. And the oats. And the oats, because we needed to use the myplate.org, you know. Um, so we came with a recipe that we call... And the apples. Apples. And we call what? The recipe. But fit to run Boston Marathon, cod, 
potato cakes. Uh huh. Because you know we we wanted to express what our <gasps> town oh, is no. known for. So what is it known for? The Boston Marathon. I Marathon's. accidentally corrected Mr. Kernan and said fit to run Boston. No, fit to run cod potato cake. You f you forgot the Boston Marathon. I That's didn't. Okay. I forgot. So anyway, we wanted to represent our town and what is more important than the Boston Marathon, you know, start starting line. So Abby was talking about back in the day when she had the experience of seeing the runners come to her school. No, Abby? Memories. Memories. So we then went to Pride Shopper and bought all the stuff. And then, it was fun. And then what did we do after? We went, went to, to my your house. house. Mm -hmm. And then potatoes. We boil them mm -hmm. and then um, peel them. Peel them. Uh -huh. And then put the cod in the oven. No, we cut the cod. Mm -hmm. And we put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. And we cooked it. it mm -hmm. Baked it. And then mix them together. Mix it together. With no, we peeled the potatoes. Mm -hmm. Mash them. Mash, 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 mash. And then we put the cod. Oats and Oats. the garlic powder. Mm -hmm. and then the and and then we mix up the eggs and the stuff and then mm -hmm. some salt and then we put the pepper in and then we put the. Then we and we mix it all together, and my then hands we make the cakes in a big silver bowl. Uh huh. And then we make the cakes, and then we make a salad with what? With spinach. Spinach. Uh huh. Um, salad dressing. What what was in our salad dressing? Strawberries. And strawberries. We made it with strawberries, strawberries and vinaigrette stuff, mm -hmm. and salt and pepper. And, and then we took we took a picture. I mean, click click, and then we noticed that we forgot that. Apples or strawberries? The cranberries. And then we took oh, a picture yeah. again. And then we took a picture again. And then we ate it. And then, ate and then it. I needed to take you where? Back home to look. No, to look craft practice. Yeah, and then I took her to look craft practice. And then we submitted the recipe, and three days later, what happened? They told us that we were in. So. Wait, three days later? Yes, it was really fast. So they you told didn't us we were in. You tell me. And then. We're going to the White House to uh, stay dinner. Why to didn't represent you tell me? Ma I told your mom <laughs> to represent Massachusetts. So we are excited. We're going to go you in July. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, that's very exciting. Yes. Hi, camera. And, and then uh, what's the most exciting part of the trip going to the White House? The plane ride. <laughs> the plane ride is the most exciting. And going on a bus to Logan Airport. She has never gone to Logan Express, so that's very exciting for her. I've been on an airplane before, but I've yes. never been on Logan Express thing yet, Bobby. See? The little things in life. <laughs> Absolutely. Have any of you been to the White House before? Nope. I've been outside of the White House. Yep. I have pictures. You excited to go inside of it? I wonder what it looks like. So I wonder if it's a self-portrait of all presidents. Probably. I wonder how much presents there are. We'll see. We'll find out. Ooh, back then, President Washington was president for too long. <laughs> see, you're learning something today, too. <laughs> you can see more of the interview with Aureli and Abby on our website, hcam.tv. Summer is officially here, and with that, some new programs will be airing soon on the HCAM channels. Here is Courtney Taylor to tell you all about it with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Monday, July 11th at 7 p.m., Tracy Keegan reads from her daughter Marina's book, The Opposite of Loneliness, on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Standing outside my newly vacuumed car, I wondered if I tried hard enough whether I could smell the opium perfume again, or if I searched long enough, whether I'd find the matching umbrellas and the tiny sewing kit. On Tuesday, July 12th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, July 13th at 12 p.m., Arthur Bergeron returns to discuss changes and updates to elder law. At 1 p.m., Heim Pickles' students perform popular songs in the first of three piano recitals. On Friday, July 15th at 9 p.m., Carol McCanyi discusses being an artist in Hopkinton and shows Cheryl Perrault how to make her own pottery on Meet Your Neighbor. I set up this tapestry loom mm. and she said, I'm a tapestry weaver. Would you like to be friends? Oh. 
Like, How about that? Wow, here we are in the Neverland, and uh -huh. there's artists that live here. On Sunday, July 17th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from July 11th will air. If you want to know what we are up to here at HCAM, you can visit hcam.tv slash connect to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know about goings on in town, you can subscribe to our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thank you for watching HCAM. Open door.